Microtik PPOE over VXLAN. Virtual Extensible Local Area Network or VXLAN is a tunneling protocol designed to solve the problem of limited VLAN IDs. VXLAN creates a layer 2 overlay scheme on a layer 3 network and the protocol runs over UDP. So this is our topology. We have our main router that is connected to the internet via Ether1. We have our site routers, site 1 and site 2, and they're connected to the main router. So the main router is doing the NAT function or the network address translation, while our site routers are simply doing routing function. So once the basic configuration is set up and the IP addressing are configured, so for this topology, we will make use of a dynamic routing protocol, which is OSPF. So from the topology, you would see that there are three OSPF areas. So we have the backbone area 0, and we have area 1 from main to site 1, and we have area 2, which is from main to site number two router we have our main and ac routers under area zero so the ac router or the access concentrator router will function as our pppoe server in this topology so ospf once configured on the main the site routers as well as the ac will form as the underlay in this topology and it will enable the routers to reach to the various loopback interfaces IP addresses. For example, for site number one, it should be able to reach the main or the AC loopback IP address. And that is redistributed, of course, via OSPF. So when OSPF is configured in the main site and site two routers, as well as the main to AC, and when we configure PPPoE on AC, so meaning to say in the middle or in this area, it is on layer 3 network. And we have a layer 2 service that we want to traverse over this layer 3 network down to our client. So our client will be the PPPoE users and we need them to connect to our PPPoE server. So meaning to say, we need to find a way for our layer two service to be over or traversing a layer three network, which is why we have VXLAN for this particular tutorial. So in our AC site one and site two, we will configure VXLAN. And from the VXLAN, we will be having uh, what we call VNI or a VXLAN network identifier. So you'll see it on site 1, site 2, and as well as the AC router. And then finally, you have what we call VTEP or VTEPs. So it will be the virtual tunnel endpoint. So it will be the device that handles the, the encapsulation or encapsulation. So we are now in our main router. So under the bridge, there is a bridge for our loopback interface. Under the IP addresses, so you will have going to AC. So on this particular subnet, going to the site one router, site two, and the loopback interface. And you'll have also on the ether one, interface going to internet so as you notice the interface ip addresses are all on different subnet so next will be on our routing so we have our router id that will be the loopback interface so after configuring the router id we will configure ospf so we begin with the instances. So you have version two, we have only one VRF, 
router ID is assigned. So we have originate default so that our default route will be redistributed to our OSPF neighbors as well as the connected route. So after the instances, we'll go to areas. And as you notice, we have three areas. Area 0, 1, 2 with their corresponding area ID under our single OSPF instance. And finally, you will combine them together under the interface templates. So you have going to AC, which is under the backbone area with these particular networks. Going to site 1, going to site 2 with different networks. And we also declare Ether1 as our passive interface. So later on, I will show you the neighbors and the corresponding IP routes. But other configuration will be under IP firewall. There is an NAT only for the main router. So this is the PPPoE subnet. Of course, uh, you could change the configuration here on the source address or you will use a source address list instead. So another thing to check on our main router will be to test if there is internet connection. And there is already some testing before, but we'll test now for the actual ping test. So it is able to go to quadruple eight, quadruple nine, and perhaps uh, quadruple one as well. So we go to our site one router. So let's take a look at the configuration. So bridge. So we have two bridge interface, one for loopback, and we will just discuss this later, one for VXLAN. So next will be the IP addresses. So one that is going to main on the 172.16.1 network and with the loopback interface. So the fourth octet is changed in this loopback interface, which is dot 10. Next will be for our routing. So router ID is also configured. Next will be the same routing OSPF. So we'll have instances using the main and router ID. We will not redistribute the default and only the connected route areas. We only have one area for this site one router, which is area one. Next will be the combination of the instances and the areas. We're in Ether1, which is the connection going to the main router, will be for the area 1. So right now, let's just take a look if it forms neighborship to our main router. So if we go to neighbors, and yes, it formed neighborship to the main router, which is 172.16.1.1. You'll have also link state advertisements for area 1 as well. So for our site 2 router, nothing much is changed from site 1. It will still have the same bridges, which we have the loopback and the VXLAN. It will still have the same IP addresses, but of course the subnet will be different. So it will still have the main and loopback IP addresses, but this time it is dot .20 for site number two loopback IP. So you'll have the routing router ID, the loopback IP as the router ID. Next will be routing OSPF. So you have the instance number one, version two, router dash ID. This is the name assigned for that loopback IP. We don't have redistribute of the default route. We only have the connected route redistribution. So for area, we have area 2 instead of area 1 with the area ID of quadruple 2. Then we piece them up together. So we have Ether1, which is going to the main router with these following networks. So once the minimum OSPF configuration is done, we should see on our OSPF neighbor which is on the instance one, this will be our main router. 
So I think by now I could show you the IP routes since we have the neighborships in our OSPF. So if we go to IP routes, you would see that we have OSPF routes. So for the other subnets and for the other loopback interfaces, we have some 10 here that we could certainly avoid but not covered by our tutorial. So these are the PPPoE IP addresses of a client that is connected already. So now we go to our access concentrator and for this tutorial, it only acts as the PPPoE server. So it has bridge configuration, loopback and the VXLAN. It will have IP address configuration. So these are the clients that are already connected. So you have going to the main and going to the loopback interface. Next will be for the routing. So the same router ID and you have the routing OSPF. So you have the instances, you have the areas. So area zero and of course interface templates and you will see neighbors which will be your main router. Then as for PPPoE, we have some videos about PPPoE configuration. So just check our channel. So I'll just go quickly on this particular router, AC router. So we have the IP pool. We have our PPPoE pool of addresses. Then under the PPP menu, you have the PPP profile. We have the secrets, client one and client two for our example PPPoE clients. And we have our PPPoE servers. Notice that the interface is on the bridge VXLAN. We just need to counter check because a PPPoE server interface should not have any IP address. So for the bridge VXLAN, so if you'll notice on our IP addresses, there is no IP address directly assigned to that bridge interface. So the bridge VXLAN, the ports will be the VLAN interface for the PPPoE and the VXLAN interface. So while we are here in our AC router, then let's just take a look at how was the VLAN or VXLAN configured in this router. So let's begin with the interface and under the VLAN. So there is a VLAN 100 for PPPoE. This is for the interface Ether1 that is connected to the main router. So VLAN 100 with a VLAN ID of 100. This VLAN interface is part of the bridge port of the bridge VXLAN. So ports, so the VLAN 100 PPPoE is there. So next piece of the puzzle is the VXLAN 100. So where it is configured. So we'll close this one and we go to interface, interface uh, VXLAN. This will be the VXLAN 100. So we click plus sign and we have this. So we name our VXLAN, we'll have the MAC address, the VNI, the VXLAN network identifier. In Microtik, there is a requirement to use a group. In this example, we will use a multicast address. We have the interface, the VLAN 100 that was just created. The VXLAN is using UDP 84 7.2 and the VTEPS IP version is IPv4. Then we have to manually configure the virtual tunnel endpoints or VTEP. So still under here VXLAN. So on VTEP, so using that interface, so we have our site 1 IP of the loopback interface as well as the site 2 loopback interface of course on the same port numbers. So as for site one router, so we have the bridge VXLAN. And if we go to ports, we'll notice that we have the VXLAN interface and the physical port 
going to the client one router or going to the client one switch then our client one router is connected to that switch take note we are not implementing any vlan interface on our site number one so we'll take a look at how the vxlan 100 is configured so it will still be the same you go to interfaces you go to vxlan plus sign Okay, so the name of the VXLAN is VXLAN 100. You'll have a different MAC address. You have the same VNI and group number. And the interface, the Ether one, this is the physical interface that is connected to the main router. And you'll have the same port number and the version for the VTEP is IPv4. So if you can go back to the video for AC router you'll notice that we must match the same vxlan network identifier and the group multicast ip address and then for our vtep so once here is we go to vtep plus sign and we have vxlan and you notice that we will have only one connection and that is going to the loopback ip of the access concentrator or the pppoe server so if you go to site 2 okay there's nothing much difference between site 1 in terms of vxlan configuration you still have the bridge and the bridge vxlan it will still have the ports going to the client router and we have the vxlan interface and then you'll have your vxlan interface under interfaces vxlan you create this one and you'll have the MAC address which will be different. The same VNI number, the same group number, Ether1. This is from site 2 to main router. You'll have the same UDP port and the VTEPS is IPv4. And then finally you have the VTEP that is going to the AC router loopback IP address. And finally, of course, to prove that our configuration is indeed working, so we'll have a client one router. So under interfaces, we'll have the PPPoE client interface. So we'll supply, so Ether1 that is going to the switch of client one. Dial out will be the secrets that we have created, username and password. And it should be now running. It should get an IP address okay and finally if you want to test for example tools ping so there is a test a while ago so quadruple eight quadruple nine and as well as quadruple one client two router will be the same you go to interfaces add a pppoe client interface configure the correct physical interface that is client is writing on dial out will be the secrets that are provided and you should see a default route for example ip routes so you'll have d a v v stands for vpn you will have tools ping for example let's go to quadruple eight let's have quadruple nine and quadruple one and we have an internet connection.